Hi, I'm going to go through this question on hypothesis testing for the normal uh, mean. And this is from Physics and Maths Tutor, and it's question two. OK, right, so on the first part, we're given information about um, a lifetime of batteries made by a company, and we're looking at quality control. So the lifetime in minutes for a random sample of 80, OK, uh, of of super strength batteries are given there and we notice first of all there are no gaps between the groups so this they already have their class limits on there we don't have to find them that's great right so the first question estimate the proportion of these batteries which have a lifetime of at least 174 minutes so at least is 174 or more so we're looking at the right hand end but we notice that 174 would land inside that group so when we have something like this I tend to think about um, how you draw a histogram so for this group the last two bars would be somewhere like this so um, we have 172 to 175 and just look back at the question again 175 to 180 and the frequencies would be the areas on a histogram so if I just go back here so that's what we've got there I'm just going to adjust the focus to see if it helps not very much right okay so 174 is somewhere in here so we want to essentially want to chop that 16 up um, to find out what the frequency would be from 174 to 175 basically assuming the data are evenly distributed okay well we know that this is two wide and this is one wide so we're going to need a third of 16 so the total number of people uh, sorry batteries um, that would be at least 174 would be a third of 16 plus the 4 and if we're asked for the proportion that are at least that we divide by the total number of them and so we've got the so proportion that are at least 174.0 okay and then I'm just going to do it on my calculator so A third times 16 plus 4 and then divide by 80. So we get 7 sixtieths. Or if you wanted to, you can have a, a decimal. Okay. Right. So that was question A. Let's have a look at the next one. So use the data in the sample um, data in the table to estimate the sample mean and the standard deviation. So we don't even need to look at the front for the formula for this. We just do it on the calculator. So I'm just going to try and make this so I can see both a calculator and the uh, numbers. OK, so I'm going to go to the stat menu. OK, I'll just delete what's here at the minute. And in, oh, whoops. In the first column, um, I'm going to put in the lifetime midpoints, and in the second column, I'm going to put in the frequencies. Okay, sorry, that's just me faffing. So the midpoint of 160 and 165, it's not age or anything weird, is 160, whoops, 2.5. Okay, I can't type 162.5, that's it. Then we've got between 100. 65 and 168, so that's three wide, so add one and a half, 166.5. And then the next group, 168 to 170, that one's an easier one. There we go, 170 to 172, that's another nice easy one. 172 to 175, that's three wide, so I'm going to add one and a half to the bottom number, so 173.5. And then the next one's five wide, so 177.5. Okay, then I put in my frequencies, so we've got 5, 14, 20, 21, 16, and 4. Okay, and then, if I just press F6 enough times, I can see the option Calc. I need to tell it where my data are, so I click on Set, 
and my X's, my lifetimes are in list one, that's fine, I don't need to change that. And my frequencies are indeed in list two, so I don't need to change that. So I'm going to exit and then I click on one variable because that's what I've got, it's just lifetimes. Okay, and that then gives me the mean. So I just need to write down that the mean is equal to 170.0 and the standard deviation, the one that we use, is the sigma x1. So that's 3.38. Okay, and this is all in minutes, isn't it? Okay. If you wanted to show a method but uh, we don't need to for this one, it's not a detailed reasoning, um, then you would use the formula. So you know that the mean is the sum of the numbers divided by n. So from the calculator, I would just get that that is 136, uh, 13,600.5 divided by 80. Okay, and then that will give me my mean that I've already got. And the standard deviation, you get the formula from the front sheet. And the most convenient one to use is the sum of the x squared over n minus the mean squared and then square root all of it. So I just copy that formula and put the numbers in the right place. I know this formula is easiest because if I look here on my calculator I've got sigma x squared. So I can use that. So I've got, oh my goodness, 2313000 over 80 minus and the mean was 170 squared and then that gives me the standard deviation we got before okay so let's look at the next question so now we have got what looks like a histogram there we go yep yeah. right a quality control manager models the data by a normal distribution with the mean and standard deviation we used in part b Okay, so that was 170 for the mean, so that seems sensible because that's right in the middle there. And then our standard deviation was 3.38. Now, you are expecting the normal distribution, all the data to lie within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, so we're going to check whether that works in order to comment briefly on whether the histogram supports the choice of model. So, we know it's roughly symmetric. So that's a good shape and bell shaped with um, so with line of symmetry about 170. Okay. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna check that the width is sensible. So if we do 170 minus 3 times 3.38 and 170 plus 3 times 3.38 and our normal distribution should lie within that so 170 minus 3 times 3.38 so 159 so 160 roughly and if I do the same but with a plus 180 so let's look back at the picture and it's going from 160 to just shy of 180 so that seems reasonable as well. So all the data lies within this range, there we go, these values, okay, slightly truncated at the top end. Slightly. Okay, so quite a good, reasonable model. Sorry, you can't quite see that. Okay, so it seems to be fairly sensible. It's got the right line of symmetry. It is bell-shaped and all the data are lying within our cutoffs. There's a slight bit less than 180 at the top, but it's not bad really. Okay. So we're now going to use this model. So it means by this model is the quality control manager models the data using a normal distribution. Okay, so we have a normal distribution and our mean is 170 and our standard deviation is 3.38. So we write 
3.38 squared for our variance. Okay. Use this model to estimate the probability that a randomly selected battery will have a lifetime of more than 170.4 minutes. Oops. Okay, so I'll just switch on here and scroll down so you can, sorry, move down so you can see. So we find the probability that X is greater than 174.0. So if we go to the Magnificent distribution menu, okay, we have a normal, we're doing the greater thans, we've got x is 174, we've got that the mean, uh, sorry, the variance is 3.38, okay, sorry, not the variance, the standard deviation is 3.38, okay, I should probably have kept more decimal places, but never mind, and the mean is 170. Okay, so let's have a look. And so that gives us our probability. I'm just going to, I'm pretty sure that will round to 100, 118 rather than 119. But I'm just going to go options and edit just to make sure. Yeah. So that probability is 0 0.118. Okay. Now before, we got 0 0.1166. So that seems pretty good. Compare your answer with your answer to part A. So for that, I just put that 0 0.118 is approximately equal to 7 over 60. So this is a good fit for the data. This model is a good fit, this. It's a good fit for the data. Okay. Right, so back to the question. So we're now on to the last part, I think. The company also manages ultra power batteries which are stated to have a mean lifetime of 210 minutes. So I'm going to write that down. Okay, a random sample. A random sample of eight ultra power batteries is um, selected so we've got I'm jotting down at the minute n equals 8 okay the mean lifetime of the batteries is 207.3 minutes so that's a sample so x bar is 207.3 okay carry out a hypothesis test at the 5% significance level okay to investigate whether the mean of the lifetime is as high as stated so we're suspecting the mean is less than that okay so when we're doing our hypotheses we're going to be checking to see if it's less than that and it tells us you should use the following hypotheses mu is 210 mu is less than 210 where mu represents the population mean for ultra power batteries so they have done that bit for you which is normally a first couple of exam marks so this time you're not going to get anything for that. Never mind. You should assume that the population is normally distributed with a standard deviation. So I'm going to jot that down as well. Of 3.4. Okay. So while I've been reading through that, I have been scribbling away on these little bits here. I'm going to just try and get some paper so it's a bit more usable. Okay. So... Mean, standard deviation, sample size, observed mean, 5% significance level, hypotheses. Okay, so assuming that we have a normal distribution, so the mean would be 210 and the variance would be 3.4 squared, which means that the mean of a sample of 8 would have the same normal distribution, but the variance is divided by the sample size. Okay. And we're testing at the 5% significance level. And we're looking at the lower tail. That's a pretty terrible drawing, but never mind. You get the idea. So we're looking, that's 210. We're looking at the less than tail. We've observed 207.3. So we're trying to find out what's this probability here. So we're going to use the Magnificent again, normal distribution menu. So I'm going to exit because I need to change my standard deviation 
and my mean and I'm also going to switch it to the less than tail. Okay, I'm testing 207.3. Okay, my standard deviation is going to be the square root of, well, 3.4 squared over 8, so that's the same as 3.4 over the square root of um, 8. And the mean was 210. And then we press go. And then we look at this probability. And we can see that that is. So the probability that the mean is less than or equal to the 207.3 is equal to 0 0.0123. Quite a nice number. We're going to compare that with our 5% significance level. It's less than 5%. Okay, so if we imagine here's our 5% cut off. So we can see that our observed value has a smaller probability, so it's in the critical region. So that means there is sufficient evidence. To reject H0 at 5%. Okay, it is likely that the mean lifetime is not as high as 210 minutes. Okay, right, I hope that's helped.